All right, so it looks like they run some kind of demonstration for cutting the planks over here. The various stuff. I think they remove the belts. There should be belts. There's none. There's no belts. Whatever that takes. But this is to cut the the wood into planks, which as evidenced here is this the end result. But it looks like it's been a while because these are pretty old looking. These would be what they've they managed to cut here. And then these are the end pieces that are no good. And they did that off of this uh, sawmill. This old timey sawmill. You can see that they have sawdust from the, from the efforts. So they were cutting a bunch of, a bunch of logs. And then uh, running it down this rail, it looks like. But, not sure how they keep it on and they, oh no they don't really run it down the rail I guess they don't want it to move at all maybe the rail is the rail would be for bigger bigger boards probably but that wasn't necessary maybe I don't even I'd have to see the demonstration and know how that works all right in Cavalier and I'm gonna attempt to park overnight in the Leavers food parking lot it seems like a good, okay spot, surrounded by granaries and this wheat field. So I left the levers next, I was next to a canola oil, and now parking next to one that's next to a wheat field. Whoa. Oh. I think they just checked me out. They're trying to check me out. That's the whole reason they pulled or well, they turned this way. They have no other good reason. Boy, I feel kind of dumb parking at this swimming pool. There's some weird noise. There's some kind of a scream sound that comes from. It's making a scream whistle sound right there. That had me stunned for a few seconds. All right, so I'm parked at the swimming pool and I was looking on the map where I could park at the park. I didn't see this. The trees are covering it up. So I'm going to move quickly, private property, and I'm move over here at this park. This whole parking lot was not visible on the map. I'm like, over there, there's a park, and it's on the side of the road. And I'm like, I'm not thrilled with that. I don't want to park on the side of the road. I want to be off-road. And the only visible spot I saw was on the the swimming pool but I had to come over here and now I'm like what I didn't see this whole lot there's no playgrounds yeah I would take right next to the dumpster or something yeah and then there's frisbee golf this was not visible on the map I had to actually come out here to take a look at this so I'm gonna move my car Has anyone seen a certification like this? Dielectric fluid? I've seen these boxes all over the place. I've never seen that certification. So I'm gathering grass on the edge of this park. It's okay. About the only choices seem to be grass and 
burdock, but I don't <laughs> I don't want to take a lot of burdock. That stuff is rough. The bathrooms are open. It's so peaceful. I'm able to exercise and I want to boil up some some cereal and the um, grocery store opens at 9 on Sunday, so then I can get milk, but maybe take care of the the uh, the cooking first and then go get it. Oh my god, I was so happy to see these boards because they're great for my hands, a perfect size for doing exercise. And there were just two of them sitting in the parking lot. And I come over to look at this box. These boards are for breaking. They're using them for breaking and they just left them out here. Same on the other side. No? Huh? Bow in? Yeah. So they're, these are, these are all karate boards. All proceeds go to families. What? They were trying to sell their karate boards? And now they left them in the park? Um, I might take two more. They're supposed to break easy, but uh, they're good for hand, good for my hands. And now actually, and well, also the teapots too, it's for putting uh, teapots on the roof. I mean, I got smaller blocks, but I've never been very happy with those smaller blocks. I've held on to these smaller ones for a few years now, but the bigger one is, is definitely more welcome. All right, I can't show it, but I can make comments on it. I've never been so bombarded by these little cute drone flies that hover around me they're just hanging around there's like about i don't know almost 10 of them hanging around me in my car trying to land on me and hovering around they're just they're so cute i tried to feed them a banana um i've never had so many hover around me before and it's it's like one of the most welcome infestations I've ever in, encountered. So unique here. Not a single mosquito, no flies, but these little cute hover things. Like this guy. Oh, he moved. Alright, I went in into the woods with my two teapots with an attempt, with the expectation to find some some uh, weeds to pull, like grass for tea. And instead, I've decided I'm going to take this stick as a walking stick. It'll be the last I hold, unless I get rid of any. But, uh, wow, the taller, the better, I'm finding. Because it really gives a nice full range of motion for the arms. The taller ones, the ones that I have to stretch, stretch my hands up all the way above my head uh, for the tip. They're just, it's an awesome feel. All right, I want to get a peek inside here. The door is open to this water tower. So that's a big step ladder and a freezer. Is that what they got down here? Oh, okay. Hmm. <clears throat> it's so weird to see wheat browning out at this time of year when the vegetation is far from doing that naturally. There's still some elements of green, but it's browning out way too early for for nature. Oh, natural wheat. What was natural wheat growth rate at? We know that chickens are crazy in their growth cycles. Look at this. This wheat is falling down in sections. There's 
there's sections that are just completely flattened. The farmer can't reach the flattened areas. And there's quite a few. Like, is it one of those from wind gusts? But yeah, I still would consider boiling some of this. I would pick it and throw it in the teapot. But I'd prefer wild, honestly. Like, look at this. This this wild grass is still going through its fertilization phase, putting out those yellow things. And uh, this wheat field, it's already past maturity. It's kind of hard to beat the edge of farm fields. Looks like you recently hayed this, made these bales. But on the edge of this field, I got good grass that I can pull, and there's stinging nettle. So I got some good choices here. And I already grabbed some dandelion on the edge of the wheat field. The seeds on this uh, stinging nettle, they're falling on their own leaves. They're just falling down on their leaves. They're, they're putting out so much seed. I'm not sure if the seed is edible. The root and leaves are supposed to be. Although the root hurts my stomach eating it raw. You know, this type of grass seems like it would taste pretty good after it dries in the in the fall time. Uh, it seems similar to the type that I was picking. They would turn nice light brown and they get red spots. Tastes good by itself. You don't even need milk. But regardless if it does. See, the head, though. The head gives kind of gives it away because I'm not, I don't recall seeing that head for the ones, the brown, nice brown ones I was picking all through Kansas. So it's, it's different. I'd have to see what this is like after it dries. After using porta potties over a long period of time and distance, I've come to appreciate the classics. This is actually a classic porta potty. Cause they're all the light soft plastic this is the older an older version of uh fiberglass it's a harder it's a harder unique sub yeah they use metal it's all plastic they're entirely plastic for the modern ones this is an old style porta potty when did when were they invented they're probably invented about that time uh, when they started out making them with this with this type of material all right i'm not sure how this will come off uh, for comments but it's just so fascinating to me they made this baseball park it's abandoned now but they put so much effort into electricity was it an electrician who put it together got the boxes and the wires all over it looks like it might be lit up in the dugout and it's kind of kind of new and it's like it seems as though as soon as it was made it became abandoned okay there's no lights inside but it is a a newish a new type of concrete this is a new concrete but it's all overgrown they left the bases there's no foot marks anywhere it's all entirely concrete over there so this is a long lasting they even got a batting cage off on the end there this is a long lasting thick walled thick walled dugout they really had some intentions for it to last but they just abandoned it <clears throat> it's like they put yeah here's the plug-in I doubt the electricity works. Rudimentary nail, nail to hold it in, but I guess that works. They put some effort and then just stop using it. It's, it's really fascinating. Like there's a better baseball field somewhere else. That they're using nice nice dandelion growing oh it's unlocked in here 
and they have equipment. It's, I think they've abandoned it. It looks so abandoned. And they left, they left baseball equipment behind. Various kinds. Such a strange issue. And here's, yeah, I've got counters. Those could be kind of useful for a lot of uh, different applications. Yeah, it's hard to tell if uh, electricity's in operation. Cyber power. They put a lot of effort into electricity right at this dugout. Got balls. So strange. So strange uh, how how these uh, baseball parks they get. See, there seems to be more motivation to build them than there is to actually use them. It's just the appearance is what people want. The appearance of Americanism. So after a baseball field is made and abandoned and they allow the weeds to come back, these are an example of the type of weeds that we get. They're all teable. This is the plantain, grass, clover, dandelion. I don't call it quinine. It's that Chinese wormwood stuff. This is, you can make a tea out of this. It's a nice bitter taste. This one you can make tea out of the leaves. It's like the bigger, the bigger dandelion. And it's overgrown on to the, the dugout. Oh, and then another type of clover. The type of weeds that like overturned soil. Even barley. This is a, a barley and you can, you can uh, boil that too. It's got some leaves, but I would just boil the whole aerial parts. What else? Anything? The shepherd's purse? I think shepherd's purse is boilable too. I just, I don't really come across it. Alright, usually it's most of the, the weeds that can handle that like the overturned soil, but I don't know. Oh? Why is that? It's got a powder on this one. I think that's probably good too. Oh, wait, is that purse? No. So that's... I think this is a marshmallow, which is supposed to be edible too. All of this, anything that likes the overturned soil. And they definitely overturn the soil <clears throat> and then abandon it. All right, so here's the newly abandoned baseball field. And this is another baseball field. You can't quite make it out. They're not mowing it as much because they took down the fence and everything. But you could see this is the outfield. And then it's taller weeds in the infield. They circle around. It's not too visible, maybe even on video. But that sandy area is overgrown with uh, these weeds. There's a line. There's a clear line. You can see the clear line on the type of vegetation that thrives in the infield, the old infield, compared to the outfield. It's just kind of interesting to me. It looks like a lot of dandelion. A lot of dandelion and barley, two types of barley, have taken over the infield from many, it looks like many, many years back. They took down dugouts and fence and everything. And that, that field over there is turning into this. And there's two of these fields. There's another one down there. Okay, this is home plate over here. And then you run down to first base first no it looks like all the bases actually have the most growth or at least a particular kind of growth that's the type of alfalfa I think the legume family first base has and the second base and third base have fairly significant uh, 
alfalfa growth. In this old baseball field next to that one, uh, the first base area, I think the first base would be further down, but it's got that significant alfalfa growth too. Roughly the second base, not quite the third base. All a nice variety of vegetation. These are good clovers. Pick those and put them in the teapot. Some, some uh, camel mill is growing out here too. I never see camel mill in Wisconsin. And there's quite a bit in North Dakota, the east part, east side of North Dakota, not the not the west side. <clears throat> Seems to me that this COVID New World Order has affected baseball, not just on the major level with the major leagues, but in small towns with people abandoning baseball fields. But I have seen baseball fields abandoned well before COVID, so. It's not entirely a COVID thing. COVID could have accelerated it though. All right, it's just a little after eight. I'm thinking this courthouse is likely open. COVID is over. They usually open up early when there was no COVID. So check it out inside. It's supposed to be historic from like 1912. So they're gonna likely encourage photography. Just not in the courthouse room. See, that's the thing. They confuse courthouse and courtroom. <laughs> to, at least the cops confuse it at their convenience. No photography in the courthouse, but really it's more about protecting the courtroom. All right, in the courthouse. Oh, courtroom. Okay. They have uh, this pretty neat dome. Commerce, agriculture, justice. <clears throat> All right, so there's this uh, public health, and it's a little strange. What is this? The Tura. Powered by Matt. Environmentally friendly. Neutralized pills, liquids, and patches. Huh. Not for use with drugs. Tear open pouch, fill with warm water, wait 30 seconds, shake and dispose. They're just giving them away. All right, so they have a, a big walk-in safe, Cincinnati safe and lock. You got one door. Two doors are very heavy. And it's a storage. Looks like they kept the original shelving. Is there a light switch? Oh yeah. And then they keep all their records in here. <laughs> all the court records. Old records. I don't want to get locked in here. Oh. For the people who count calories, I wonder how they would do it if they wanted to turn towards more natural, natural solutions because the scientists don't really burn or measure the calories of these natural sources of food, only the farm stuff. All right, now we're looking at the wheat 
from the evening sun. Evening, evening sun wheat. I came back here to get grass. Came back here for my grass. But I don't wanna park here tomorrow. I, th I really like that, that park with the, with the plumbing next to the swimming pool. Well, we're, we're still trying to dispel that he wasn't already hurt. So I'm dealing with a lot more yogurtizing of my milk in the summer heat. And uh, yeah, I, I kind of want to get more yogurts and toss in my grains. Because they'll turn, they'll either go, oh my god, what is that? What is this freakish bug that just landed on my knee? You can get off of me. Excuse me. But, uh... Yeah, things are things are heating up and and rotting, and the grains when they rot by themselves stink. They're not so bad when I mix the yogurt in with them, and then some milk. It's a preservative, so they don't stink, because it's so hot and things rot so easily. So I'm finding that I drive out to places simply just to grab the the grass. When I find a good spot to pick grass. I want to take as much advantage of it as possible because there really are areas even in all this all this uh this area that's has plenty the land of plenty there's still areas that i park where it's just, just almost impossible to find anything decent within walking distance all right i'm filling up a third teapot here the only one other one i can find and I've come across something that was interesting. What a bite pattern. I'm going to drop this. What kind of a bite pattern is this? Something was eating the grass blade in a uniform manner. On this. I've never seen such a uniform eating pattern. It's almost like a machine came through and punched holes in it. But it's like the only one. No, I don't see any others. This is the burdock before it gets into it. Well, it's, it clings a little bit. A little, a little before the major clinging. Doesn't really want to, doesn't really want to attach. This is very rare. I left my car down there. Some guy just left his truck here. In this small town, a person, if they were very criminal minded, could have a free toolbox and whatever else with the windows down. Might as well have just left the keys in the ignition, too. There's nobody in there. Might as well have just left the keys in the ignition. <laughs> just leaving it out here. They, they assume this is such an isolated place that it's it's fine. And I mean, I don't want anything. I <laughs> got enough in my car. You know, it's most convenient to be able to bring my grass back to like a table of some kind to spread it out and inspect it a second time. But I don't always get this kind of luxury. So I moved uh, at this edge uh, towards the evening time and I should have come back this way a little further uh, to get out of the sun because I parked right in a, a spot that didn't provide as much shade but this little spot is pretty interesting. All day today on Tuesday I believe uh, there's I counted maybe five five cars, 
five, six people who who passed by to go down the, uh, here. Um, some just kind of drove in and drove out type of thing. It's very, very quiet spot. I could probably get away with parking here overnight. But I, I think I want to go to the library. All right, I'm in Pembina at the Fort Deer Recreation Area. It doesn't quite say it's a state park. This must be the one of the old forts of the the Fort Deer. Still standing, pretty strong looking. But it's definitely seen better days. Got the shuttered windows. I don't want anybody in. These look like the old style locks. You pull up on this to enter. Man. I'm sure it's not that big of a deal looking in. They use cement. Oh, a little mud. I could push this out of the way so I can see in. What's in there? Can we... Can we zoom in? What's that handle thing? I uh, can't quite make it out. It looks like wooden floorboards. Do they have holes for shooting? I thought I saw... <laughs> oh, I don't even need to bother moving mud. Look at this. You can look right through inside. What can be seen here? Any wild animals? They got the old stove. So you don't even need to enter. You could just look inside through this uh, board taken off. It had an old shutter. What was that old shutter located? There's one up here. Use the old style metal. This is kind of neat. And then, yeah, that, that, so this bottom shutter fell down, collapsed. I kind of want to walk over to that gravestone, but it looks it looks kind of kind of newish. Keep out. Okay. Yeah, it's a door up here. Isn't that weird? What a weird setup. This definitely was not built built to code. And then another... What the heck is that? Is that a printing machine or a sewing machine? Hmm. And then more shutters. Why do they have one shutter on top of the other? I don't think it's... Was it two stories? I didn't see stairs. All right, Pembina State Park. On the Red River. All right, it says it's the Pembina River that I crossed. And then it looks like camping is okay. Welcome, recreation. Enjoy your stay. They even have a picture of a tent. $10 no dump fee non-campers. I think I could stay here and not pay a dime. Oh my god. A couple of bucks in an unlocked box. Somebody broke that. Somebody dumped... Did somebody put $2 in here? When this was unlocked, no way. How dumb can you get? So I don't. It's, oh, the camping is definitely over there. They got a broken box. Use at your own risk. Okay, bathrooms are good. So the camping's over here. They're asking $10, but they're obviously not enforcing it because the box is, the box is broken. There's no way you're going to put, I'm going to put money. I would, if I thought about putting money in there or paying for the camp site, there's no way I'd put money in that. It'd be stolen so easily. All right, here it's a little bit better enforced. I don't know why my, they need to take that blue box down. Somebody put $10 in there and it's unsecured. But they got they got forms here. And then you could pay here. So there's two there's a yellow spot and a blue box. I mean the area looks okay. 
I don't know, they, I guess they got water and stuff, pay $10 to, to have water, and I guess electricity, yeah, have to test it, you pay $10 in Pembina, you'd have this campsite all to yourself, I suppose, too. All right, on the other side of the camp. Now this is not gonna show up so well because the sun is in my eyes. This is an elevated fishing, fish cleaning section. Rules for fish cleaning. No kids on the platform. Just try to get it at an angle. Turn grinder on before entering scraps. I've never seen a message like that. Fish fillet. Oh. Yeah, it's fish fillet rules. Electricity. I've never seen it, uh, an elevated platform for this. And it's just, yeah, pipe below. What would compel them to... What a weird connection. Why is this? They have water continuously running into this. Both have shut-off valves. Looks like it's been established for a while. So at this uh, campsite, somebody left this sweater thing. Actually, it looks like it might be my size. <laughs> Do I want to represent the 8732 Motor Club? It was just balled up right here. All red and very standoutish. All right, where I'm at is some burning smell. I see a slight haze. A nasty, nasty burning smell. So I don't think I want to park here all day. I don't know how long that burning will last. It's a good time to walk through here now while these burdock burrs can't stick to me. Or I'd whack them with the stick, I suppose. So that's what it'll do. It'll make you turn in a circle in here if you try to get into the water. From this perspective, it doesn't even look like it, the water's moving. Maybe that's, oh, you need a ladder? Uh, okay. All right. Yeah, I still smell a little bit of that burning smell. Yeah, I don't quite understand this recirculating warning. Uh, for the whatever river whatever river it's called these are lambs quarters and they're taller than me I've never seen lambs quarters taller than me before I thought they you know I've seen them waist high but they're taller than me that's weird so right under the bridge is a warning about Right under the bridge is a warning about recirculating water. People, people swim here. So I think I'm gonna go look for the library and grocery store. And also, I just wanna move. Yeah, the burning smell is definitely collected smoke in my lungs walking up the hill felt a little extra challenging so it's a real concern if i can avoid this smell i'm not driving away quite yet i'm walking away so maybe i can try to find the limits of this smell by just sniffing around all right so this building says it's the u.s customs and border protection looks like an old nice classic building Built in 1931. Employee entrance. It's pretty interesting. 
I still smell that burning. Yeah, I don't know if it's a forest fire or a factory. I want to look on the map. I think this place is likely abandoned. Look at that. They got trees growing on the gutters. It seems very... Oh, yeah. And the front door is overgrown. They're mowing it. But not the side. So this is an abandoned house. It's not even for sale. The person maybe doesn't want to sell it. This other house seems likely to be like abandoned as well. Unoccupied. The smoke is so bad it's actually affecting my heart. My heart feels like it's struggling. I'm looking for the, like this is a school, there's supposed to be a library in the school, but on the other side there's work being done. I think I'm just going to have to leave, but I just, I gotta ask, maybe somebody at the grocery store might know if this is a local smoke or if there's a the forest fire problem. Looks like a junk storage in here. I guess somebody's got kind of some new stuff that they're storing. You can only walk up to this point and then they're just tossing boxes. Uh, oh, chainsaw, yeah, this, the door was unlocked. What a mess. I think there's an upstairs, but let me just have a further. Does anybody die in here? It doesn't smell like it. What a mess. This is prime for burning. Kind of new stuff. Kind of old. It's like... They got these old cars. Two BMWs, huh? And a safe? What a mess. It's kind of a strange behavior. Just letting it go and using it as a storage. Oh, the smoke is really overpowering. So I looked around the, the school. The, the library likely has the password then. So it's not really possible. This is the other abandoned house. <clears throat> so apparently it's Canada, the forest fire. Just $6 milk. And they say California's high. Don't mind that smoke, it's just the summer fires. So I'm sitting here breathing in Canada's fire. Canada's burning down and I'm stuck at the border, unable to enter to check it out closer or um, anything. Isn't that strange how we have these borders? Even though the Canada is burning down, in times of an emergency for a lot of people, it's it's still like we got to deal with these these social borders. They're social borders that that uh, we have to agree to or suffer punishment, regardless of of these types of of emergencies. It's, it, what if the fire comes south and into America? It's like. Or, yeah, for Canada, I mean, what if uh, America could provide some help for uh, can Canadians who have uh, suffered loss? It's like there's the border and then there's COVID, which is making the border even worse. What takes priority?